Good evening, my Re News Media TV family. Welcome back to the channel for another news update. And in the news this evening, three Manchester men freed of ammunition possession charges. Three men who were charged with unauthorized possession of four rounds of ammunition, which was found under the steering wheel of a rented motor vehicle, have been freed. They are 48-year-old Everton Sims, Sean Gill, and Andre Blackwood of Englewood District in Manchester. When the men appeared in the Manchester Parish Court last week of Friday, the prosecution withdrew the charges against them. The prosecutor explained that there would be a challenge to meet the threshold required to prove the case against the men. The allegations were that in December 2023, the police acting on information went to a premises at Inglewood District, which was occupied by the three men. A motor vehicle which was on the premises was searched, and four rounds of ammunition were found in a compartment under the steering wheel. The motor vehicle was rented by Sims, but was owned by a third party. The men were arrested and charged for being in possession of ammunition without the appropriate authorization. Sims was represented by attorney at law Courtney Foster, Gale was represented by attorney at law Charles Benbow, and Blackwood was represented by attorney at law Norman Godfrey. Keith Clark murder trial adjourned until April 29 amid a juror shortage. Justice Dale Palmer today refused a request from the defense to say the start of the Keith Clark murder trial in light of an appeal filed by the defense this morning. The trial, however, was adjourned until April 29 due to a shortage of jurors. The defense is appealing Palmer's decision earlier this month that the matter should proceed to trial following a void air ordered by the Court of Appeal to determine whether the Director of Public Prosecutions could rebut the immunity certificate. When the matter was mentioned this morning, King's Counsel Valerie Nita Robertson indicated that the defense had filed the appeal and was awaiting word on whether the DPP has been served. She then asked for the proceedings to be stayed. However, DPP Paula Llewellyn said there was no evidence of the appeal except for information she received that Nita Robertson's junior was cited at the appeal court. She also stated that no order has been received from the appellate court and insisted that Justice Palmer did not have the jurisdiction to grant a stay. Llewellyn further argued that the defense had a week to file their appeal, but instead waited until today to do so to thwart justice. She further accused the defense of being cold and callous while describing their actions as frivolous, vexatious, and an abuse of process. The DPP, while imploring the judge to start the matter, noted that the case has been languishing for 12 years and that the pendulum of justice must swing both ways. Nita Robertson, however, objected to the DPP's statements, forcing her to withdraw the words cold and callous. She further sought to explain that the defense only received the judgment on April 9 and they needed time to prepare the appeal as a case of this nature was new in this jurisdiction. Additionally, Nita Robertson indicated that, besides the issue with the order from the Court of Appeal, there was also a shortage of jurors, which would affect the start of the trial. However, Llewellyn pointed out that, while they were informed that only 18 jurors were present, steps are being taken to have more jurors. At least 40 people are needed for the jury pool. At the same time, the DPP stated that, either way, the matter could proceed with the arraignment. The judge then adjourned the matter for him to consider his decision. On resumption, the defense was served with the documents. The defendants, Lanza Corporal Greg Tinglin, Odell Buckley, and the private Arnold Henry, was charged with murder. The businessman was shot 21 times inside his home, located on Kirkland Close in St. Andrew, on March 27, 2010, during a police military operation to apprehend then-fugitive drug lord Christopher Dudus Coke. The murder trial was set to begin in 2018 when lawyers for the Jamaica Defense Force surprised the prosecutors with immunity certificates that shielded the soldiers from prosecution for their actions during the operation. The certificates were signed in February 2016 by former National Security Minister Peter Bunting. Following a legal challenge, the Constitutional Review Court in a majority decision handed down in February 2020, ruled that the certificates were manifestly unfair and unreasonable. 
However, while overturning that decision in a judgment handed down in January last year, the Court of Appeal affirmed an order by the Constitutional Court that the trial should go ahead. Classes at the Seaview Gardens are primary disrupted by protest. The gates of Seaview Gardens a Primary School in St. Andrew were padlocked on Monday morning by parents and ancillary staff who are unhappy with the leadership of the principal. Placards with messages demanding an increase in salaries and the principal's removal have been wedged into the open spaces on the gates by the protesters. Scores of students and adults gathered outside the closed gates. The news was informed that the protesters wanted the principal, Sanjiana Rida Prince, to be relieved of her duties. The ancillary workers claim that they are being underpaid their fortnightly salaries, while the parents are not happy with Mrs. Reed Prince's leadership. The padlocks were eventually removed by the police. But it is understood that no classes were held on Monday morning. Efforts to get a comment from the principal were unsuccessful. Security guard shot dead by off-duty cop in St. Thomas in the comp probing. A security guard was shot dead by an off-duty policeman early Sunday in St. Thomas. Reports are that the guard was embroiled in a fight with another man around 5 a.m. when the policeman intervened. It is alleged that the security guard attacked the policeman with a knife. The policeman retaliated by shooting the guard several times. The man was rushed to the hospital where he was pronounced dead. The deceased has only been identified as a 21-year-old employee of a security firm at Dalvi in the parish. The Independent Commission of Investigations is probing the matter. Mix the feelings over new duty-free threshold. Lower cost, better access to discounts, and a diversified shopping experience are some of the benefits cited by consumers as Jamaicans revel in the new duty-free threshold for the shipping of personal items, which came into effect on April 1. Finance Minister Dr. Nigel Clark announced that the doubling of the threshold from U.S. $50 to U.S. $100 in his 2024-2025 budget debate presentation last month. Speaking with the news, frequent shopper Sharon Johnson expressed her delight over the increase. I'm able to access better coupons because my purchase value has increased. It impacts the type of goods I buy because I can now afford to ship other types of goods such as household items. The only downside is that it will affect the weight and you will have to pay an increase in weight with the shipping companies, but it still doesn't pose a disadvantage, so I'm very happy for the increase. Johnson, who often ships three times a monthly, said. Her sentiments were shared by another active shopper, Ashley Daly. I am able to buy more items in one shipment without worrying about having to pay customs twice the amount I paid for it, and I am able to access better rates, deals, and discounts. I also save a shipping cost because I don't have to break up a package into two anymore and to pay more shipping for it, Daly said. She added that US $100 is still low when you consider the fact that there are so many items we don't manufacture that we need but still cannot ship because of the ridiculous taxes and the duties. But the baby steps, I guess. For Nora Blair, it's the free shipping that comes with a higher spend limit that is most appealing. I am really excited for the free shipping. Shipping cost can be so much. I haven't bought anything as yet. But it would also mean I wouldn't have to split my orders as much and get the maximum discount and the more items with the more I'm allowed to buy. So essentially, I would spend less and save more in cash back and discounts, Blair added. However, while consumers revel, local retailers are not so thrilled with the adjustment. For Kemar Williams, principal of Optop Exclusive Fashion, a clothing and a shoe store in downtown Kingston, the increase in the threshold was another blow to the struggling retail industry, which he said is already being negatively impacted by the high crime environment. I think they should have left it at US $50 where it was before, because some people basically not sell nothing sometimes, said Williams, who estimated the impact of the measure on his business as a 50-50. Based on how downtown set with the escalation of crime and violence sometimes, enough stores not always sell, he added. But the managing director of Lloyd's department store in Montego Bay, Anthony Pearson, does not expect any significant impact from the threshold increase. 
Even when it was US $50, I think the system was being manipulated. To some extent, I have no proof of that, but to my observation, the invoices were doctored to show that whatever you bought was a US $50. So the impact raising it to US $100, I don't think is going to be very significant because the persons were already bringing in stuff that was over US $50, Pearson shared while speaking with the news. On the impact of his business, Pearson noted that online shopping has been a challenge. It has been doing so from day one. The whole online experience, because it is just so easy and convenient and fast, it has impacted us from even when it was US $50. The truth is that everything is a click away now, he said, adding that the only thing we can do is try and get creative and try and combat it because it's just the way of the world. It is a challenge. Believe me, it is a challenge. I really wish I had a solution for it, but unfortunately I don't. But everybody in the brick and mortar is feeling the impact for sure. The increase, as I said, is there, but the impact already has hit us hard. So the increase I doubt is going to be significantly additionally impact, but we'll see how it goes, Pearson said. Last week, the Jamaica Customs Agency sought to remind overzealous shoppers that all imports exceeding the threshold of US $100 will be subject to duty charges based on the full declared value of the shipment. It means that a US $101 shipment would incur duty on the total amount, not just the $1 excess. This news was not well received by some shoppers, including Daily. Rubbish, Daily said. The duty should be assessed on the extra amount because the US $100 is duty-free. It should operate just like income tax.